ご迷惑でしたかいや迷惑ってこともねえんだがならもうしばらくですへいへいあの日があったから私は救われたのかもしれないえなんか言ったかおおいえいえあもしかして野良犬さんって時々幻聴が聞こえるタイプですかうるせえまだか雨が止むまで The first thing I wrote down for this final episode of Negan Fushin was Will this have a good conclusion to the story? Will this sum up everything in a nice, neatly gift bag for us? And I will say this Don't let my opinion sway yours. If you felt that episode 12 was a banger, it. it Put everything neatly in a bag for you. If it if it tied up all the loose ends and everything you wanted to see, that's awesome. For me, it didn't do that at all. But like I said, don't let my lowly opinion sway yours. If you enjoyed the show, more power to you. I am going to tell you what I think now. I think this was one of the biggest waste of times I've had in an anime that I've invested into. In a long time. And the end of the episode, okay? The end of the episode ends with、uh, a narrator saying,、um, This is the story about、uh, how one day these people will save the world, but that's a story for, the, for far in the future. Well,、mm, okay, well, when we started this show, the promise was this unlikely bunch of people are going to save the world. So essentially, the thing that they, that they said is what it's about, we never got there and we're never going to see it. So it's like we ended on the thing of like, hey, remember that thing you came here for? Ah, gotcha. Ain't going to see it. It's in the far future. Hope you come back never because we're probably not going to get a season two. So it's like, yo, what an effing waste of time this was. And all we ended up getting was like arc. I think we got three arcs. I'll, guess, I'll say we got three kind of storylines, you know, and none of them were really that great. I think probably the best one was the most recent one, which was Zem's storyline. And I guess we kind of got an okay conclusion to that story overall. But we got introduced, we got introduced like future tech into this fantasy world. We never fully got that really fleshed out or really explained on to what the history of that was. We then got another piece of tech in the reporter girl introduced to us again. She joined the survivor party, but then she really wasn't there. And then she shows up at the end to say, hey,、uh, extra, extra, read all about it. The resurrection of the dark demon god is upon us. Y'all gotta go take him down. It's like, okay, well, why? And you know, all this other stuff. And then they're like, yes, let's go do it. It's like, okay, well, that's okay. But then we still never get the actual like, history of like, okay, what the hell happened to the technology of this world? What happened to all these facilities? What happened to all this stuff? We never got anything panned out or explained to us whatsoever. We got like, out of, the, out of the, all the members of, the,、um, of Survivors. This episode kind of tried to button up Nick's story a little bit. It gave us a little backstory on okay, here's how his parents died.、Uh, you know, here's how his uncle found him and took him over. You know, it's like, okay, well, we finally got that in episode number 12. So we see how his parents died. You know, we see how he became an adventurer. You know, all that stuff. We see that he was suffering from his past, blah, blah, blah. So,、like, okay, well, we got that. I, I guess that's fine. Then we get the Agate stuff, which is the blue hair idol girl. Apparently, you know, what, what this episode really showed us was that she's just, it's a, like a magnetic force between her and Nick. So that just really tells me that Nick's not going to end up with, with Kirin. You know, if, if this story would go anyway, you know, you guys can ship as hard as you want, but it seems like no matter what, he's not going to end up with any of the party members of Survivor. He's probably going to end up with this Agate girl who seemingly seems to like always be drawn to him 
some way, you know, by just the force of, of the universe, apparently. And she's drawn to him again, and we kind of get their story buttoned up a little bit. She basically says how he was his, sa- you know, she was, he was her savior, he was, she was his, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. The most satisfying part of this episode was we got Zem, you know, following the last episode with the priests and stuff. We got Zem, who seemingly took over the medical services that were being provided in the slums. He found his calling through this stuff. It's like taking over someone's burden willingly and being okay with that. And then we get an extra step where Bond pokes his nose into his business. He's like, well, this is a dangerous place. I'll be your bodyguard. So I think that little piece of the episode was probably the best conclusion you're going to get. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, that Nick Agate stuff, Nick Curran stuff, Nick Tia, Tiana stuff, whatever, ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? So it was pretty much that. Now, speaking about Tiana, we get her feeling meaningless, winning at gambling, blah, 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 blah. Nothing ever happens with her. We get no satisfying ending. We get a little taste of her at the end, winning again, being a little bit happier. Uh, Kieran, we get no real seemingly, we, we get no ending of a, of a really good nature for her at all. We just get to learn that she's still motivated by the, by the, the things that have, uh, been haunting her of her past. And then this, them trying to go fight the white mask and trying to go fight the dark demon god. She's also going to go and try and find this, uh, dragon gem and basically, you know, kick the ass of the dude who, who, uh, betrayed her. So it's like, okay, so Tiana and Kirin get no additional, like, closure there whatsoever. And then when it comes to Bond and the reporter girl, we get no closure there as well because none of the questions we really have about them were really answered at all. So we just had to kind of be satisfied with a half ass conclusion for Nick and a decent, I'll, I'll give it to them, decent conclusion for Zem. I think Zem was the only one we can really, like, close that chapter book as his new story begins. The rest of them, though, it's like, yo, we didn't really get sh- stuff. We didn't get nothing for them, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. This was a big waste of time for me. I was I would easily put this at, like, a 5.9 out of 10, like, just barely scratching the surface of 6. Like, I wouldn't recommend this anime to anybody. Like, so, I mean, like, Five and a half, five nine. You know, I would put like five nine to be gracious out of ten. I would say like there was four out of ten episodes, and then there was like eight out of ten episodes. Like I think, like the best part of this anime was the first episode where we got a lot of promises, and then the the Zem arc, which was like two or three episodes. That's really it, y'all. So that's my final thoughts. I'm sorry. I wish you know for those who loved it and whatever. Like I want to be more positive. I do. Not saying it's unwatchable. It's fine. It's a fine waste of two and a half hours of watch time or whatever it is. Like, I just wouldn't recommend this to anybody. And I, I would be, I would be behoofed if this gets a season two. So, I don't know. Those are my final thoughts. Wish I had more positive things to say. I just simply don't. But regardless, I'm gonna see you guys in the spring for more good anime that is around the corner because there's a lot of really good anime. So. We'll leave this trash in the in the in the back. We'll put it in the dumpster, and uh, we'll see you guys in spring. Let me know your final thoughts in the comments below. If you have nothing to say, just drop an emoji. Let me know you're here. Thank you guys for being with me all season long. I'll see you in the next season. Peace. <laughs>